Now let's look at the last few elements. Science is global. It, it's going to be the whole planet. Uh, and here is where we can say non-religious people are growing. And you can see China, Scandinavia, and so forth are the least classically religious. That means more likely to have left the axial age religions we talked about. 16% is a pretty big number for agnostics and the non-religious. That wasn't two 100 years ago. And another. And then finally, I'm going to show you some science, religion. See what you think. Is it fair to say these are saints of science? I think so. Or are these myths of science? Myth doesn't mean a false thing, by the way. It's words used to express an unexpressible, ineffable mystery. So there's the beginning, Big Bang. And then, sadly, our Earth will look like that in four billion years. The sun will burn it like many religions say too. And then rituals of science, right? Don't they go through all that, the blood pressure and the Nobel Prize? I mean, science isn't big on ritual, but it has some. Sacred centers of science, NASA, the Hadron Collider, I think they are. Preachers of science, especially Carl Sagan was a mystic. Richard Dawkins is more like a uh, classic fundamentalist. Um, oh, I won't say a religious name yet, because but I, there was, well, in our case, it was always the Baptists would let you have it, right? I mean, you know, they're tough. They don't have too many Baptists in Wisconsin. Any Baptists? No. Okay, then I was, I'm safe, okay. And then look, the quest for immortality, even in science, it still wants the same thing the religions want. Uh, kind of gruesome. This guy's being frozen so he can be resurrected like Krishna or Jesus. Whoa, and this woman's got a new arm. And the, uh, the most gruesome of all is that woman in the top corner just got a new face. A little creepy. I think science could be. Faith in repeat experiments. This has made some scientists mad when I say this, but let's admit it. If you don't have that faith to begin with, then you might be in one of the classic religions. It is a kind of faith that this makes things true, and that makes you a scientist. Ethics, well, definitely fraud in research. And there you go, QED, uh, science is religion. Quadratum demonstratum. Did I, did, I pers did, did, did I do it? Science is a glue, it's a sacred canopy, primary worldview, sacred figures, objects, cosmogony. Uh, science has killed God and become a new God for many. And then science has found out some things in Buddhist meditation, for example, uh, are actually the case. This is the happiest man on the planet, according to science, which is kind of a laugh. <laughs> But he registers the highest bliss levels through all those gadgets. Right there in Madison, they do that. Uh, and so if you want to know who is the happiest person on the planet, science can measure that. I find it amazing. So I tend to think the future will look like this. And we got to think, actually, the Catholic Church, far and away most Christians on the planet, embrace the theory of evolution. Do we know that? And forgave Galileo. It took him. Uh, more than 300 years, but they did. And that's a sign that science has impacted the Catholic Church. So I think you'll find more Christians buying into more and more science, but that also means that science is being polluted by, if you want to look at it that way, by the religions. So I can open it up for questions. I